All right, we're in our life. So, do you want to give us at least an overview before we decide which one we tackle first? I think it will be helpful to set the stage of what you guys have been doing. Okay, so this one is the, uh, sing the signature decoding, which basically, um, there's a description right there. Basically, today you can get blobs and have a blob reader, but you have to know basically the, the structure of, of these blobs and, and in order to parse them. Like, you have helpers for reading parts of the blobs, but you don't have anything that sort of guides you as to what's coming next or how to how to make a symbolic representation into a tree kind of a structure. So you have types inside signatures that are like, you know, all every an array type, a, a generic type, and basically like you are you know, familiar with any kind of type symbol representation, it's like a tree structure. And it's basically serialized into these blobs with these like tokens, not metadata tokens, like some sequences yep. that basically represent these serialized trees if you want you're going to bring them back so this is an api that uh lets you you know do uh, that do that without sort of you know having to uh inspect the bytes and be uh if you have your nose in the in the in the spec yep in terms of the cases to that are coming at you um and then i think this is uh to just give a quick look at the api so it's quite there's quite a few apis in here right and then also add that uh, the one of the goals of the API is not to force you to use some particular object model for mm -hmm. a symbol representation. Right. This can be used in LAS and can be used in a bunch of other places. And then the second one is uh, the debug directory from the PDB, I guess, or which one is no, that? No, no, for the PE. So this is a, a, in PE file, there is a section or like the debug directory is in the section, but it's a blob. This is just a table which has some information where to find the PDB mm. or the executable and some IDs like who is uh, that match you know, the who is the type uh, included in the PDB so that the budget can find the matching PDB to I see. PDR. So the structure is not really documented. Well, some of it is documented in the PE code specification. Some of it uh, is not documented because it's supposed to be just. Uh, you know, didn't feel like it. They didn't feel like it. <laughs> yeah, there's a bunch of records that are like, oh, this is just for Bob you know, and nobody knows what it is actually. Right? <laughs> there's a bunch of stuff that is native only, right? So what I done is I actually documented the stuff that managed compiles use, mm -hmm. managed tools use, and this is API to read that stuff. It's not API to read every single thing that can be there. I see. I don't even know what the things are. Um, and then I just piggybacked a couple mm -hmm. other small, there was another, there was a few small changes, the recuid and the... Uh, uh, so this one here that I should open? Or maybe, uh, no, it's fine. They're, they're all included, but okay. there's a couple of miscellaneous things I that see. aren't directly, um, the, the method semantics attributes being public. Yeah, so this looks like the smaller version. I mean, maybe we should look at this one first yeah. and then fill the remainder with the other discussion. So this is basically, we don't have an Apex today, so that's... Have to make you with what we have here, but I think it's okay. Um, uh, so I guess this is just uh, this all goes into system reflection metadata, right? Uh, like yeah, the, 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 the yeah. yeah. Well, there is, seems to be an enum at the top that doesn't go to reflection metadata; it goes to no, it does. So, so oh, the, you mean uh, the, uh, DLL? Sorry, yeah, 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 yeah. No, yeah. But it goes to the root namespace. Yeah. 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 We did that for most of the like uh, enums, right? enums, because we reuse a lot of the system yeah. reflection enums also that rep that come from the spec also like for yeah. Right, so this one just is like you can see it alongside you know the other ones that, yeah, that are there. Attributes, attributes, That's right. Those are the ones. Uh, so it fits there with under. this one. We didn't have yeah the namespace in context like makes sense like yeah. I mean, we could put this in system reflection primitives like it could go there in the contract. Is but the, like we then we have like uh, portability issues with respect to which platforms are running on and stuff, so mm -hmm. we put it a little higher for some of them. But we we have some precedent for that. I don't think it, it's really a big deal because like if some of the enums like if you're not using like you know you could put these down, but it's probably not going to buy you much, right. and it will buy you versioning problems because now you have to have reflection primitives that you know have to be. Makes um, sense. Yeah. Though I have to say, I agree with your conclusion about the location, yeah. but then it kind of, I almost wonder whether it's mm. it makes sense to add these enums to such a generic namespace. Uh, 
Well, I think that ship has sailed with the other enums already. I mean, the question I don't is feel it's strong either way, but like it's you know you're basically saying this is specific to this assembly, and then it's kind of like a it's kind of like a uh, a pragmatic uh, uh, like of the two, right? So it's like it's like you know it's really just like primitives, like you know we already have a bunch in this namespace, like but you know it could be useful outside, you know, in the sense of like. I don't know. It's we already, but like, I'm saying that in practice, probably it won't be. And then, you know, it just, it's in the root namespace, and then, you know, nobody else can add this one. So, but it's. I, I see. All right. But yeah, I think given what we've, I don't know, we'd have to, I'd have to see the namespace in context, but I think we'd have three or four others like this already. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. So, are that, is the terminology like. Where the fuck know, is there? Is it. Like a standard terminology, or you just invented it for the purpose of this EM? So we went back and forth, right? The original API review, so I think this was public, and then I made it internal because there were comments on the original API review. Now I remember oh, because I realized that? that we weren't actually returning it, we were just using it in the implementation. And then we went over it. Different places have different terminology. The spec has like set, like add on, fire. remove on fire, and then the BCL is like, oh, don't ever use the word fire. And so like, we basically have like this impasse. And these are the names that correspond to the CLS, like the CLS uh, prefixes, mm -hmm. which are to me the most friendly and the most consistent with sort of the sort of FX view. But at the metadata view, I, they should be called, you know, you know, add fire and add on and remove on. And what's what's and the razor is basically invoke method? Is that what uh, it is? Uh, yeah. uh, no, that's fire. It's called dot fire. Like it, you, if you see the IL, it's like there's a fire. Yeah, yeah. I'm saying this enum value corresponds to the invoke method on delegate. It corresponds to when you have a, a, a property or an event. Yeah. They have the accessors associated with them, right? So it corresponds to what kind of an accessor it is. Well, I, so, so I, I know add a remover. But what is razor? Razor is not used. It's in the yeah, spec. It's, oh, it's what a use. thing. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, well, there's no. other, and that's also a thing. I, I, I kind of <laughs> thought that maybe it's uh, it's the invoke method on delegates. Okay. It's not exposed to the C sharp. Oh, oh, okay. So it leaves room for the new language that we still have to invent. <laughs> it's funny the spec says flag fire. This refers to the optional erase method. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Like this spec is inconsistent with yeah. itself. So. Exactly. I mean, we decided we discussed this one long because this one was going to be public in V1. Yes. The reason I made internals because there was some, but I think we landed on this last time. I yeah. No, I'm I'm fine with having it. I mean, it's just you... I put comments that are missing. That no, says, no, 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 that is. The doc comments <laughs> say the the doc comments for each of these say like the specification. This corresponds to this in the specification mm -hmm. and. In a CLS compliant method, we'll have this prefix, and then that, you know, so you have. I think it's okay. So, any more comments on that one? Otherwise, so are there any other languages that use it? Like maybe, maybe. There, you certainly could. I, maybe F sharp does. I don't know. Yeah. Like so, the, the interesting thing about these things is like the CLR doesn't really know anything about them, right? Like we could like much about them for reflection, like because like. When the compiler has, like decides to raise something, it has to actually pick a method and call the method, yeah. right? It doesn't. Yeah. So these things. That's why there's an other. It's like, oh, maybe two compilers could kind of agree on, like, you know, if there's an other method and it's named this, then that means this thing, and then I'm going to call it. But the CLR wouldn't know any different. It would just be calling methods. I think that's just over engineering, but yeah, yeah. But, but for completeness, but you can yeah. use attributes, right? For yeah, yeah. Sure. Or naming convention. You think the goal of the P reader or the metadata reader was just expose what is spec what is specified, whether it's useful or not, right? I mean it's just this this this, yeah. this sake to be complete, right? Correct. Right. And this enum is you know, you know, not actually by the reader because the reader kind of recognizes yeah together the setter and exposes its yeah. properties, but the metadata writer is is the same what you want and but but going back to the last value, the razor, do we know of any case where anybody would want to write it? No. Then do we feel strongly that we want to yes. uh, expose this? Yes. Why? Because it's in the spec. Well, do you want to make so, so honestly, okay. here's the thing: you can always write it. 
because you can always cast okay. the scene okay. value, you know, which... 20 to the scene value. So I, I'm not sure if I agree so that I, I would expose There is a language. Yeah. It's called a MSI. Oh, yeah. yeah that's the... And if you write, yeah, you have a compiler for it, and you can write dot .fire, dot .other directly. You can type it, you can compile it, you can spit it out. Yeah, I know. Now we're why, would new, you? why would you? So we're making, yeah, a, new, so we're making a, a new language. writer. We want to replace. We mm -hmm. want to make ILASM work with the new writer. And then you're going to be like, oh, well, you have to cast 0x20 to something. Or, because we didn't want to expose it, just put it there. Like That value is in. Like, it, let me put it this way. If this would add like 50 types, I would agree with you. Given that it's just an enum beta that is named in the spec, it doesn't. It doesn't. But they are saying there are many other values named in no. the spec. I thought no, there's no, 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 that's. I think my understanding is that's. This, this is exhaustive for this, oh, okay. for this thing. Yeah. yeah, I mean, other is the value, right? Right. Well, it seems very specialized. In this case, I kind of would also. It's just feedback, but I would not add it to the root names. Okay. I mean that one. I, I don't feel very strong. Like, do we have any other enums in system reflection metadata? I don't think so. Um, you have the API account. Yeah, except that. Is. Yeah, no, it, unfortunately, that is not indexed for some reason. Okay. <clears throat> we can also open up the CS file for references and then review. would. Nice try, Wes. Nice try. Uh, that's the reason why it's not indexed, because right now I only process references. <coughs> um, all right. What's it called? Method uh, semantics attribute. Where's the MVX file? I'm sorry. I thought it was always What's in your review, Nick? Um, well, these are all in the system reflection mode of the assembly. Assume. Yes, right. yes. Okay. So all the other things are PE-specific, right, which is why they're important or executable, right? I assume that namespace already exists? Yeah. The namespace already yeah. exists, yeah. So we already have the split. In the, they're in the same DLL, but we have all the facilities for PE files in one yeah. namespace. And, and is the assembly CLS compliant? The, the whole assembly is not CLS compliant. I don't believe so. I would be it's very marked sorry. with CLS compliant faults. Is that what <laughs> I should gather? Because you have a non CLS compliant oh, yes. yeah. And we are fine with it. it the ship it has actually sailed. uses pointers, so that's true. Are you trolling or are you asking? No, no, no. I'm asking a real question. Like, you know, like it's you in the new shorts. So we did. We use ints for anything that is like a size or like a, yeah. But like when it's like an opaque kind of a, a thing that we like that where negative doesn't mean anything. Then, but like for lengths and stuff, we did. So it's not CLS compliant, but but like it doesn't you doesn't have that property like we're casting all over the place because there's unsigned ints all over the place where you don't want them. Like there's a few here, but like they're like for the most part, like you know, for the most part, like we did use this. Like for all the lengths and offsets and all the things that you would be doing arithmetic and then going into an array or whatever, it's all you know. Hint. But we do have pointers. We do have a few, yeah, where it makes sense. And this is a bit ironic that we're talking about the spec, but we're not following the spec. Well, <laughs> we're, we're, following following the spec. <laughs> we're just the, the API service isn't following. The spec, the spec doesn't say that everything has to be CLS compliant. CLS compliant goes true. It's, it is. It's but you should have CLS compliant alternatives for the things that are not. <laughs> That's what it says. Uh, I, I <laughs> <laughs> you can see CLS compliant read the bytes at the time. I can make them. Sure. I, well, so the only thing I would first, like this, you know, the unsigned integers rule is like so old and it's not very relevant today. It's just we. Don't tweak the ECMA spec. Right. Um, I would say, you know, there would be some value if we could mark the assembly CLS compliant. And then mark the numbers. Uh, but then I think you have already so many APIs. You must have this assembly marked CLS compliant for false property. It Otherwise, is, you. It is, it, yeah, it's it, like yeah. project, huh? I mean, but we can mark it true and we can go through it. I don't think it will be as bad. It won't be that really? bad. I don't okay. think so. Do you have any pointers? Yeah, I don't think we'll be So I, I remember we, we talked about the pointers in public API, and there was an opinion to use byte pointer instead of int pointer, like yeah. in PTR. Uh, 
you know, but in the in PTRC are sometimes and by point there isn't. So what is the recommendation? Should we expose we, pointers as pointers? Or no, pointers so I think the way we yeah. did it in a lot of other cases in APIs is this done CLS compliant byte star or whatever star API, and then a byte array API that is slower because it does internally some copies and whatnot. That is basically right. the so, CLS compliant substitute. If you're working with you know in a language that doesn't support pointers, then well, you know, in PTR is not gonna help you either. You need to have some API that actually copies to a byte array, and then you can so, so basically, but you can get an in PTR from somewhere else, right? You know, you, yeah. you you can have you can have an array pin it, and from the GCN you get in PTR, right? So you can in fact use pointers in DB, for example, even though right. DB doesn't support pointers. Uh, yeah, so I don't know, but I'm, what I'm saying in general, there may be some other languages that right. don't even support. Doing things like this, correct? They basically just uh, so we know about. They, they uh, support pointer, it. They support it. Handles, <laughs> yeah. uh, well, the, the, the problem is that you know with, with this level API level, you know we we can't accept by the way because you know, we, we don't man manage memory, right? We, we need to create the GC handle inside, pin the by the way, and get a pointer, right? And I don't think that's really what we want to do. No, I'm not sure what it was. And we are not disposable, so I like no, 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 Whenever you need to like expose an API oh, yeah, that is a byte array, you create a byte array on the heap and you use it to expose it to the to user. Well, so the code. meta data reader yeah. right, operates on block yeah. of memory. Correct. It takes a pointer yeah. and size, right? Well if it if you could construct it with byte array, what would the byte meta data reader do? Well, it would need to pin the byte array, take the pointer. I see what you're saying. And then, just get an instance, not to collect yeah. things like this. You and get then an instance it would need to dispose it, but yeah. it's not disposable, so where does it dispose it, right? So it would need to wait for another, another type that's disposable. Or something. Anyways, but like we, we, want, and we, we want to do that at some point. Yeah, right. So let's, like, anyway. by the way, I'm not suggesting that it's. Uh, I take the feedback that we should yeah. oh, compile a bug and we'll go and. Mark the uh, CLS compliant falls. I don't think there's that many. Um, but if we want that, you know, I mean, that means still like major version. Like so we don't, you don't care that much about the U shorts you said. Like I'll put well, one false, but like no, 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 I'm not no, going to make a mark major version. No, no, I didn't say that we don't care about U shorts. Okay. Uh, okay. I said that if we had the process to modify the ECMA spec, we probably should go around <coughs> change it and say, you know, it's CLS compliant to have U ints. Okay. Uh, but. You know, here the value would be you either are CLS compliant or you are not. So, so the goal not would be, cherry pick. in other words, the goal would be to enable using this API from the even though they don't have to. Yeah, so, yeah. so, but honestly, I yeah, so, even, you know, like if the cost of doing this is uh, half a day, it's probably worth it. No, if the cost of this is much higher, it's probably not worth it because I don't even know, like, yeah. in practice, what language is scary. So talking about the pointers, we actually want to make it easier to not need the pointer, not to use the pointer API, right? Because you know, we, we even in 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 the pra in practice in Rasmi, sometimes don't want to fix you know, like pin the array, etc. People don't want to do that, and you know, so it's just has so so yes. So I, we already have an item to add some API that makes it easier, right, to avoid the pointer API. Mm -hmm. So anything else on the shape of the types? Right, so just so just uh, ex explanation here. Uh, the debug directory is a table, right? It has entries, um, and each entry has a, a type, which is like an enum, uh, which defines what the structure is of data that the table points to. The table has a pointer to data in the, you know, the echo file. I do, that's the data pointer, relative virtual address, and size. Mm -hmm. it basically, identifies the blob in the P file, and but the structure of the data is not uh, is basically encoded in the type, right? So it depends. Um, and so, so if you once you read the entry, you can then check if you care about the type. And if you do, then you go and find the reader for the blob, right? Based on the enum value. Right, and the, the only ones that are kind of documented 
our code view, which is information about PDB, mm -hmm. and determinate state, which is just a simple uh, record that says that the PE is deterministic generated. Um, actually, that, that there is a, one thing that we might want to change. I don't know. Uh, the C++ is going to document the deterministic thing because they need it as well. And they're going to determine, uh, document it in the, um, uh, in the PE code. It's fine. Mm. But they call it repro usable. <laughs> it's like repro. <laughs> And so maybe we want to rename it to reproducible uh, instead of deterministic. Do we know when the name is finalized? Uh, well, they kind of. <laughs> if they already do, then the, well, we should pick the same name. Yeah, yeah, we should probably pick the same name. We can always alias in the future too, if we thought it was useful. That's true. But is it uh, in, in CLI spec, what is it called? That there is no CLS. Yeah. This, this is all okay. So uh, if you can open, if you can get to GitHub and uh, to the spec subdirectory of system reflection metadata, master. Uh, GitHub for CoreFX. Source. Oh, source. Okay. <laughs> oh, God, this the back button is really fast. <laughs> Thank God they really used to see it. The screen was here. So, yeah, if you click on this, this one? one, yeah. This is my attempt to document the missing stuff. Right. So, this is the types of theme you know, that we have in the enum. It's a new thing. It's a new thing. It's a new idea. Yeah, I know. That's I know that. All right. So one one more question about the APIs on the previous page. There's this thing called data pointer. Is it just yes. an offset from the virtual address? Uh, well, data pointer is a word that the PE uses for pointers to files. Like you have you have a file that's basically a stream of sense. From the beginning of the file, uh, and relative virtual address is you know, RVA in the file. Uh, it's relative to the position and stuff. Uh, yeah, but so it's the offset in the file, it's the offset the, in the file from yes. the from the relative virtual address. Is that no? no it's absolute offset. It's absolute offset in the file. So why do we call it pointer not offset? Uh, because that's how we call it. how it's already exactly. called. Yeah. And we, because we it's kind of. I know, I know. Weird to call something a pointer that is an int. It makes yes. people make them confuse it. Yes, we, we already have other uh, PE uh, structures that are. I guess it's PE, so well, we, if it's your spec, then. We kind of like, there's this constant struggle when you do stuff like this from the spec, right? <laughs> like follow the spec naming or some other naming. And I think we like we have diverged sometimes from the spec more in the metadata case, but generally as an acknowledgement to like, to like like in the space of metadata because reflection is a thing because you know the bcl has names for things because like these things these concepts have multiple names and then we can make the argument like more more you know but if somebody's looking at this you know they're like looking at the p kind of thing and not really a same like it's not really the same arguments yeah, don't necessarily know. apply I agree. Yeah. all right and then i guess there's some apis to actually mm -hmm. get these guys right yeah yeah so the director entry is already existing type. Uh, it just doesn't have constructor. <laughs> Makes sense. Or it has internal constructor. So it's making this one public. Um, and P reader, yes, it just has two more methods to get to the one directory. And then read uh, the data that we know how they are structured to be specified the structure. So what happens when these directories aren't present? You get null? No, you uh, can't get null, right? The directory is not present. You get, oh, I forgot, temporary, I think. Uh, well, the, for the first one, yeah, for that one, <coughs> but that's a struct, right? Code view, data directory. That's oh, that guy, right? Which one? The second bit? Yeah, this one here, yeah. Uh, read code. No, so you, you pass an entry, which describes this is the entry in the, in the directory. Oh, I see. So you so pass it really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it has checks, you know, whether that's valid entry, you know, whether it's code view entry. And stuff. So it's basically just parsing the thing that I give it, right? Essentially. Yeah, parsing the thing that that 
this guy points to it. Yeah, that makes sense. So why do you call this concept debugger, not PDP? Like, would it be better to call it read PDB directory? Uh, right, so the debug directory is, again, from the key spec. It's still, so it, that way, that's what it's uh, called? Yes. I see. And code view is, again, uh, the name in the okay. spec. Uh, PDB is basically the, the container that contains code view yes, information. PDB right? is the format. Uh, and we <clears throat> this guy can point to port of a PDB or a PDB. Yeah. PDB. No. yeah. So it's, that's the component. Yes. Yeah, I don't have any anything else. So the only thing to have is method semantics attribute should probably be in system reflection metadata. And the other one was mark a seven this CLS compliant true and mark an image APIs as clear as compliant false. I think that's what you said, right? So we, we should probably look. Uh, yeah. we have uh, I, one more. So okay, yeah. sure. There's a type called directory entry. Don't we already have a type called directory entry? No, we have directory entry. It's not debug directory entry, I think. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I thought that, that we might, in IO, you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. But this one already exists. I don't think we add this right well, now. Well, no, but we missed that problem. Yeah. yeah. I don't, I never, yeah, no, I haven't seen anyone hit it. Um, At least we put all this in the. Is in there a directory in IO? Is there? I don't want to put it on. No. I, I think it's there's a directory, directory info. info. Uh, I think it's in uh, file info and directory info. Oh, I guess there's a directory right. entry. Oh, wait, maybe I'm going to look at an API or something in IO. There's a current one in system data directory, so I guess. Okay, so. Which I don't know if that is. But oh, there's sure there is get, get file system that. entries, like, yeah, is the API, yeah, but it's written as info. Yes. Yeah, it's in directory well, services. I, I thought I remembered. It's an AB directory. That's what I was thinking. Directory. That's what I was thinking. Okay, so we're unlikely to collide. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you use LDAP or Exchange, you don't care. So. Yeah, isn't it uh, actually Active Directory? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. But if I would parse metadata from an Active Directory, yeah, maybe. Yeah, it's actually class. <laughs> well, all right. So then that's that. Yeah, I think it's fine. Because yep. <clears throat> All right, so I think it's a part thing. Uh, one, one more uh, back to the uh, attributes methods. Yep. Again. So I think we should really check if we are adding anything new in the metadata file. Like, I don't think we have any attributes like that in the, in the system reflection metadata. Uh, I don't think we do either because we yeah. decided <laughs> in the first round of API reviews to put them in the reflection. So what do you want to do? Is valid that you mean there's a trade off between being consistent, like the feedback is saying maybe it's pretty specific, and just put in that data. Yeah, like, uh, you know, we put them in the room mm -hmm. thinking that maybe they can be reused, but I wonder whether they really can be no, reused. That's, so that's a good point. Yeah, you can put it to like come up with five something. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so here's the sample code for parsing signatures. It's not very. Uh, Sonic, walk us through that. <laughs> so basically, if you basically the idea here. Um, the idea here is that uh, if you scroll up a bit, uh, there's a, some discussion. Like, okay, so basically the idea here is that you we, we're going to make trees from these blobs, mm -hmm. uh, and you're going to pick what the type node in the tree is. Right, you're pick some. Something you're gonna you're gonna totally define it so it's a generic parameter. It's this T type, right? and then we're going to do this like recursive descent parse through the signature. We're gonna find things, and as we find them, we're gonna call you back and say, "All right." So first thing we say say we find the type int. We're gonna say, "Okay, give me give me your T type for int." And then we have the int. And later on, we're like, "Oh, find an array of int." So we we'll say, "Give me an array of int." Right? And then we we'll say, "Give me this generic instantiation." So it's like the way you basically basically the provider. I'm using the term. Provider here is basically like the factory of these of these type nodes, but I mean it, it could be caching. So like for some for something, so I called it type provider. So basically, you have this you implement this interface. So you pick T type, you implement this interface, and then you sort of as you hit things that have these signatures, you have a now a decode method that you can pass a provider into and yeah. get out T types from the like like that are basically represented as you as you chose. So that's the like. Approach because you won't see that uh, if this doesn't show the, the, the implementation of these interfaces. I see. So the uh, idea is, I mean, in order to construct the tree, you clearly have to allocate, so you can make it allocation free. Right. So this but, idea but the idea is, is that I mean, we could either create our own representation, but then everybody has to essentially reallocate their own representation. So you basically inverted it and said, 
well, you clearly have a symbol representation for a type, so I just ask you to give me the one. So you just force a little bit of structure on the on the on the yeah. thing, but and there's going to be some overhead, like there's going to be some potential like impedance mismatches where like like you don't have exactly like you can't quite fit exactly. So like maybe I think I'm going to need this like in Rosin like there sometimes like you want to put things on a parameter node and other people want to mm. put it on a type node. So like in reflection, by ref is a type thing, and in the CLR it's often considered that way, but like. Can also be thought of as a property of the parameter. So, like, I didn't want to have like ten. So, if you look, Rosalind like has a decoder. I don't want to have like. I tried to avoid having like a parameter, like like having all the nodes in the tree mm -hmm. to have be generic, right? Because you could go that far. And in fact, like Rosalind has an internal API that kind of works that way. But it makes it the, yeah, the, yeah, it the makes Rosalind the, API is not perfect. <laughs> it makes so it, it makes it very complicated. So this is an effort to like. There's a trap. All that to say that. Like the goal is not zero allocations. Like you'll find immutable arrays of T types. Sure. And the goal is not to make like a deep tree mm -hmm. that like you know. But there yeah, are, so there are some trade offs. So this is a little bit higher level. So if you really want zero allocations, just scan the signature for something. You can yeah. do that. Yeah. We have other right. Other API. But then you need to use the spec and understand the detail. Yeah. Right. This is more convenient, but it's still on the level that. Uh, it's very conservative with allocations as as few as possible. It doesn't force any, any structural new types, and mm. so Rosin would use this. Uh, and the providers are part. stateless, correct? So you can kind of yes, yeah, yeah. You, you allocate have, them once, and then yeah. you can reuse them. Correct. Uh, That's a lot. Right. Yep. Yes, it's very it's completely <coughs> functional. So like everything, never, it never like yep. yeah, it never it doesn't remember anything it returned. It's just yeah, yeah. Rosin would create a single you know, provider. Well, so they might have state actually. Uh, that's actually not true. So they can have state. You need that for the um, for decoding uh, generic parameters mm. because, like, inside the signatures have like the third generic parameters. So you need context. It's depending on it depends how you want to represent the signature. Sometimes you literally just want to stop looking at bytes and say, "Oh, that's the third generic parameter." Then you don't need that context. But if you want to if you want to correlate it back to the, like it's the method, then you can it's on the provider. Currently, it would have to be because there's no. We could add it. I thought about adding a context arg, but I thought the provider could also provide the context. That's we could discuss that. And that's what I ended up doing. Right. Yeah. Okay. I, I would rather not create. Okay. Well, so let's feedback. So. Because actually, yeah, today that's what Rosalind does. Like it does a new, it like yeah. it has that. It, it creates a new one with. I, I, I know it does, but it should be. Okay. So we allocate a lot of those. That's so we, we we have a pool of them. And, you know, it's complicated. I don't know. Interesting. We can make it more. So we I mean, can have a T T context art or something that we pass everywhere, but then. Uh, yeah. Well, we'll yeah. see because yeah. they can yeah. yeah. Why is it in the interface? Uh, class. <laughs> um, so well, there's the actually the like a hierarchy of them. There's I also didn't finish it, but like I did have to give it to, the, there's also a custom attribute decoder that uses the same thing, and then there's also going to be a, a parser for reflection type names, and they share like this hierarchy. So you could, I mean, I. Abstract classes. It can be abstract. Can be abstract, abstract we classes. don't expect it to be you know, unless the type system in the ECMAS type changes, right? Which is unlikely. Then it wouldn't need to add any methods to it. Originally, what's so, the benefit of it being? I went through a few. So <laughs> at one time, although I didn't, <coughs> at one time I experimented with. This being the provi having provider be generic so that it could be a struct so that you didn't have to allocate it so that it could carry just a little bit of context. That's actually that causes a bunch of other problems. Like you lose all the type inference and like the API just got insanely messy. So I decided not to do that. That was one of the reasons why it was an interface. Um, and it can be faster. It could be. It could be. And then also like you know virtual dispatch is faster than interface dispatch. So. Yeah. Yeah. We do a bunch of we we do a bunch of tricks slash hacks to make them close, but 
I don't think there's a level of one zero like maybe mm -hmm. trees, like that's going to be the like, like you need to be doing like this. It's not it's not too big. Yeah, it's not too big. Like, yeah, it's not too big. 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 Simple provider actually something that's going to be in the public APIs of uh, Roslyn. Uh, I just assume that. Oh, I just made that. that that's made up. So type symbol over there. It's oh, I figured it was made up, but you were using because you're going to edit Roslyn. <laughs> well, maybe internally, but okay. yeah. This, yeah. This is like yeah. yeah this, is, this is just in like an <clears throat> example. Yeah. And another interesting point is that D type can be a string builder. Mm -hmm. And then you can just serialize the signature, re-serialize it into a string, which you like visualize the signature, right? A bit, bit which is mm -hmm. actually what I already had. Yeah. Some, some That's how I tested actually. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Yeah. So it's it's pretty neat that you, know, you, can, you don't need to have five types of string. You can just use strings and call it and call it the string code. So these are the convenience entry points to the decoder. Like, uh, I, I'm sure someone's gonna say I should get rid of the optional optional parameters. So, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> basically, these are the convenience entry points. Like, makes sense. Like now today, you're gonna have blob handle signature, and next to them, you're now gonna have this new thing, just decode signature. Mm -hmm. Now suddenly, oh, what is that? You know. Oh, I got a process provider. What's that? That's how you kind of discover this API. Yep. It also captures the um, it captures the metadata reader for you because we for so we don't generally need it, but we we pass it back to the provider for the most part. And then there's this corner case for uh, WinRT projections mm. where uh, you need to know class or value type thing in the signature that can change. So then we need to go back to the reader to figure out. <coughs> If you know, is it like we need to call it? Yeah, yeah, we need to get the projection. We need to know if it's a WinMD file. So, but that's just the options right now. So, I've made it in uh, flags, but I mean, it's none or project um, class to value type, uh, which basically what happens is, uh, anyways, you'll see that later do, on. But that's you, what the options are. Do we think that these should be on all the these individual types, or should they be in more of an extensions on the side, possibly? Not on this they're all going to be, I guess, in the same library, so it doesn't matter. But I mean, I can make them extensions, but then I need to like have access to the internals. So like, it's not going to be because I need to capture the reader. So it's a bit. My yeah, it can be layered within the library, but then it's like it's a little bit beneficial to make. Yeah, it you need right. access to the internals. It's a big enough reason. Generally, I don't make extension methods when. I'm cheating. Why? Uh, I don't like extension methods in the same library either. Yeah. Generally, yeah. I just wanted to. Well, he's Canadian, so. <laughs> 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 Are you saying you already cheated enough for a lifetime? Is that what you're saying? Scroll down. I tried to. I just. Okay, so those are the points, but I also. Okay, so these are interesting. So, like, if you look at standalone signature and member reference. So we already had the get kind, so I followed, like, they have two different structures based on, like, the first byte. So I have this way to, like, say, which which one should I should cool. I, should I I decode, right? So for standalone, it can either be locals or it can be a method. Mm. And then for member reference, it can be a field or, or a method. They have, so. Nice. Um, that's where you have this. We already had member reference kind. You don't see it, but it's the same pattern now. Because that was not, so stand stone was an interest that get kind. So how does it work? The first by byte of the signature. Oh, I, I, tells see, you I what see. So kind of something signature. else gives <coughs> you some little signature. Yeah, but and I, then you you get kind, and then you check. Right. Oh, I'm I'm decoding right. local signature. But like, yeah, small, that makes sense. a lot of times you know it's a local because you got it from like the you got it from the the thing that. Uh, describes the method body and mm -hmm. like it was a local signature, so you don't have to call get kind. You just call decode local. It will throw if you yeah. if you 
Like it'll throw it invalid operation. If it isn't. Yeah. Why isn't the get kind method and get kind property? Because it can throw. That was the. That was the. Uh, because we don't know right now. We just have a blob backing this. Mm -hmm. We don't really know if it's valid metadata. Right? So like if you go get kind and it's like you have garbage, then it's gonna throw bad image format at that. And then what do you at do? that point? And then what do you do? Do you ever handle this exception? Do I? Or do do could, could you ever handle this exception? Sure. Yes. Or okay. So so in Rasm, yeah. Rasm, we actually when we scan signature, we catch the exception and just uh, create a kind of bad signature representation. And then when only when you actually use that signature for something, you will get a compiler. Right. Right. So yes, we handle those exceptions. Um, also, we already decided from the previous review to make the, the member reference kind get kind. The other reason is because in code review, like it's, it's generally speaking, all these struct records have basically properties for the things that are basically columns in the like these are the call these are the the rows of each one of these structs represents a row in metadata. Mm -hmm. And the properties generally represent things that are like columns here. We're going a little bit farther because we're going like jumping over to the blob, getting the first byte. So it's not like, so generally when we do this, like a little, it's probably roughly as free in this case, but we generally have this distinction with like the things that are sort of like, like data like versus sort of helpers data. and sort of like have do more work versus the things that are like basically Just like, the network, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a lot of get xxx on these records, and it helps actually when consuming the library because you can tell which are the things that are like you know the, the yeah yeah some of them might do binary search exactly the exactly so standalone signature and standalone signature kind are already existing types uh, signature all is of these are the kind sorry that's a new type I think but I think I might yeah, yeah oh, these are all new types. Some, Oh no no no! Oh, there's there's no. two right no, there. Uh, I see. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I pasted that wrong. Yeah, I just saw the count for new I types. I was like, oh, yeah. are those existing? Uh, yeah, that's right. my bug. That's a new type. Yeah. Standalone signature exists, but it just has a blob. Okay. Um, hmm. Does the specification refer to fields as having a signature? Fields have signatures. Yeah, I never think of them as having a signature. But <laughs> <laughs> this is here. Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> That's weird. But they do have a signature. I mean, it's a signature because it's like this constructed type, it's right? Not, yeah. It's, yeah. I just think of it as a declaration, I guess. But yeah, it could have been typed up. No, because of yeah, the time. All right, array shape. That doesn't exist before. This is all new, right? So this is now. So this is a new namespace as well. It is, yeah. and so we we had some. We can discuss it later. We had some issues. I we don't know exactly how to do the namespace things. You know where the writer will be and stuff like that. So we can discuss that in connection with the live writer. Yes, with the writer, I had some naming issues. So I see more interfaces here. Mm -hmm. Can you like? These are the same ones. Can you take a look at them? And These are the same ones. They would all become abstract classes. Yes. Oh, really? Everything that is provided. Uh, the same ones that are just private. They are just yes. is, is, is specialization of the other one. Their inheritance so, here. But they are the ones. There's a hierarchy here so that there's a segregation so that you can reuse this for other scenarios where you don't even have all the cases. Um, for example, when you're parsing, like we don't have these features, but we have like, have, like prototypes. like. Or of uh, where David Keene actually did like the reflection type name parsing, which is another thing you need actually is missing. It's like you have to parse these. They're they're in attributes, for example, or and you need to parse them. So they has want to try to make a similar structure so you get like similar concepts documented once and basically reused. So like you can construct, like you can make these things from a from this name. You're parsing a name instead of decoding a blob. But then the individual elements won't be, um, um, uh, you know, uh, type def. They'll be, you know, like some, like you know, some other, some other thing is like <coughs> the, the, the type name parser will say like when it knows that okay, this 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 text is like not a com constructed type, then it's going to give you some some text to to represent to the to the sort of atomic type, right? But then when you then construct it becomes the same concept because now it's opaque, it's now a T type. And so so they can share the, the constructed types, but they can't share the like the primitives. Yeah, so the, basically yeah. basically unfortunately I come on decided sometimes to represent types as strings and sometimes as blocks. Right. Mm -hmm. So we need two different readers, but 
eventually they will be represented by the same symbolic uh, API. Yeah. yeah. So, that's, that's yeah. so what's, what's genetic instance in the get generic instance? What does generic instance mean in this context? Instantiating the generic type with those arguments. So it's a closed generic type. Is that what Correct. it is? Should it be called closed generic? Oh, uh, it's actually not closed. Not uh, necessarily. It can have a type parameter. So yeah. It's referred to the encoding method type parameter, right? Right. Or encoding type type parameter. It can, yes. It depends what you mean by closed. It's an instantiation. I mean, it's, it's an instantiation. Right? It can be instantiated with other generic with, parameters. With more generic parameters. Yeah. But that doesn't mean like it's substituted all the way. If that's what you mean by closed. Mm. Um, I think it's called the generic instance. In that's what it's called in the spec. I would yeah. call it instantiation, but you know, you can do that. Anyway. Yeah, generic type instantiation, right? I think that's what it's called in the spec. Well, it's mm -hmm. called generic inst type, is the, yeah. is the blob, but, but it's. But right. it's instantiation, not instance. I think instance. Yeah. That's what. That's why I ask because instance. I think okay. in our yeah, so terminology, right. it's clearly it's a value or an object. Right? Okay. Yes, yes, yes. So okay. instantiation is defined for me. That's fine. But I, I think this like Gee. messes it up. Uh, it might be me who messed that up. It's either way. Do we use the word shape anywhere else? That's from the spec. In the in the drawing matrix. <laughs> no, we <laughs> draw array shape in the spec. But I mean, I don't. Yeah, no. If it's in the spec, I don't have a problem. I just haven't it's, seen it. That's a pretty yeah. accurate description of what it is, right? It's a record that describes the shape of the array. Like it's actually not a bad name. Like How would you know. describe it? If you don't want shape. Array definition. Wait, know. you were saying then, yeah. But it's not right because it just, doesn't just, have the type. It sure. just has the. It has the. It's the. It's the rank, lower bounds, and the sizes. That's what it is. I mean. It's that's why it's and it's in it called the array it info. Says, it's like a <laughs> no, it says this, these bytes are the array shape. So I pick a struct called array shape. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I don't have a concern. I was yeah. asking the question about I haven't seen the word shape. I don't anymore. think we have that elsewhere, but mostly these bounds and sizes you don't see them too much. They're in reflection in a couple of places, um, but not as like a compound struct. And I see SC array is making its appearance here too. <laughs> So we had a whole discussion on that. Yeah, yeah. Should it be vector? And then I said, yeah. well, I already used S zero once in, uh, in 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 metadata. So I yeah, have I think we conclusively concluded that it's the best name. <laughs> Nobody likes something else, but it is by far the best name. We could and conclude. inconclusively conclude. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> that is the most does, of our discussions. The spec actually, does use vector quite a bit, but then it uses S zero array for the name of the yeah. Vector. Yeah. vector just has too many other. Did it show up on your reviews? First time, no, because it was like one, it was like one enum value I think we have so far, which we could alias the. I meant on your performance. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so by the way, back to the generic instance, it should be instantiation. The spec doesn't call it instance either. So. All right. Oh, okay. So Nick fucked up again. Like, it's uh, yeah. quitting How a many list. More times <laughs> <laughs> Um, Actually, is this inheritance hierarchy going to kind of work? Is I have to. I think if, if you're I, trying to switch them all to abstract based stuff, that might be a challenge. There might be a problem. <laughs> um, yeah. Can't even remember my own code. So this one here will be interesting. Right? It will really be. How would you do that? <laughs> uh, so primitive and I type provider can be collapsed into one, but. I'll have to look at it. Okay, so but it's even like fine if you basically if you make I signature provider abstract, but the rest the interfaces, you know, it doesn't have to be. I can do that. Like do as much as but possible, that, as much as it makes sense. I mean, I have, I have one other question, like, like which is the consistency. Yeah. Well, the consistency is that by default we do abstract classes, <laughs> and then only interfaces if, if needed. <laughs> okay. So one question I have is like, do we believe there is value in splitting those things out to make them shareable, or is it not easier to just have one thing where, in certain contexts, certain things can never occur? So we would have to duplicate some of these. Right? <coughs> what would you have to duplicate? Why would you not just have a single provider that can handle everything, and then 
if you if you that can handle everything is kind of well, the, 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 yeah the, the problem is that when you want to just parse something that that meets just primitive type and nothing else you will need to like have all sorts of overrides that throw no, I'm not important to it. I I don't but isn't the idea if I provide a type provider, essentially a signature provider, that I implement that once for my symbols? So I always have yeah, to yeah, but you don't, that's when where you uh, write a compile that needs to be able to read everything and interpret everything. Right? I I, but if you're just look, looking for something, you know, in some yeah. custom yeah. yeah. like right? you don't need to create types when you parse. But There's you have literally a separate implementation of that in so that case. You don't see it here, but like if you want to support custom attributes, then you have to now. Support some more stuff like, for example, there's no way to know the size, how many bytes to read when you have an enum and a custom attribute, and the enum could be in another assembly in the definition. So now, like, you need to implement this thing where we ask you, like, what's this enum? How big is it? Um, and that's kind of awkward, right? Uh, and then, so the, you start to put them all together, the provider gets really big, and if you do have a, like, the other thing I liked about this reason why I went to the documents also. Like it documents the, the, the requirements. Like if you're proposing custom attributes, you can definitively you can know which methods will be called. Right. Like even if you you may I've seen a lot of people do little one offs and they still do lots of throws or garbage mm -hmm. returns because they're trying to find like one little thing in there. So there's still gonna be some amount of that, but I mean the question is if we just put one big provider class and we just I, I think it gets More I don't know, I think it's too much, but it would work, by the way. Yeah, so I actually, I don't know what, what iteration is that, but in the initial iteration was the worst, I think, on yeah. the number of interpreters. I always have feedback that you can collapse some of those. Mm -hmm. So uh, I don't know if this is already this the collapse one. I didn't but, collapse it, but we said we put primitive down to that. So, so in some cases, is I think we should not have 50 interpreters, then, because then we have CCI, which is great. Um, but having three, four interfaces, I think it's okay. Yeah, I mean, I'm just asking because if you if you basically collect everything yeah, in one yeah. type, then it's obviously it's trivial to 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 have just an abstract based type. Right? I mean, originally, originally, the first time I wrote this, I just had signature decoder, which was abstract class, and everything was protected virtual, and you overwrote the things to fill in the pieces. That was certainly simple. Then I started adding the custom attributes, and then we started, and there was like the first feedback was, uh, well, this. You know, I want custom attributes and signatures to be separated, and so this design yep. sort of follows from from all of that feedback. And so, if we make the provider all collapse, we're going to then say, well, why don't we collapse it? And then we're going to be back into the original code where we said, like, oh, maybe we should split this out. So, yeah, the, the yeah. interface yeah. have that thing that that thing can tell you that we take the human what is expected. I want to pass custom attribute. Well, this is the interface I have to import. Yeah, if I want all cool. custom attributes to be parsable by my parser, right, yeah. then I need to import everything. Correct, right? Uh, so that, that has a big value, I think. Yeah. So how do you, so like I think we looked at all the providers now, like I think probably the decoder is probably an interesting type to look at, I guess. Yeah, so that's the one that. Typically don't need to use this directly because of those convenience entry points. Yep. But there are scenarios like you might be, you can do sort of like, uh, uh, well, so there's a couple of reasons. One, you might just have some bytes that you want to like, Interpret. You want to interpret them as a signature, so you don't you have you don't have these metadata reader structures to, to hang off of. Another is you might actually want to track, you might want to pick a type out of the middle of something and then see how far the blob reader advances. Stuff like that you can't do with yes, the that we definitely do in, in some cases where we just want to skip one type and then read something, mm -hmm. yeah. something like that. So so that's why this type exists, but in the common case. This is the guy that does all the work, right? Mm -hmm. But in the common case, the, 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 the entry points that you saw above will be creating this guy on your behalf. Makes and sense. then just using it. So you only see the records and the provider, but this, the coder is the thing that actually does the work and calls the provider. And you can instantiate it. And there are scenarios for uh, instantiating it. Makes sense. And Blob Reader already exists, right? That's a struct, I suppose. Blob reader already exists. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's the thing that just like has read in, read to compressed yeah. in, read to state full stuff. That's right. why it's better. So but yeah, so yeah, we thought we talked about making yeah. it this thing mutable, yeah. and then having it in the constructor. Mm. The I reason think it might be a little bit better. Just not, I, 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 you see the thing here. So, so yeah. Sorry, what, what is it? Yeah. 
So as opposed to passing the blob reader by ref, mm -hmm. pass it in the constructor and make that thing mutable. As opposed to having that guy mutable, because we already have mutable structs yeah, anyway. But the reader, sure. reader is mutable itself, correct? Yes. yes. Yeah, I, I think. I personally like the fact that you pass in the reader. I don't have a strong preference. Like my thinking is, I try to make immutable structs until I can. And yes. Then, like the, this would have been the, la the last thing that. You know, However, the signature decode is just you know can be full of a kind of blob reader that has provides more structure, right? Right. I don't. I don't know. I I don't have a strong preference, but given that this thing is a, the decoder is a struct, you know, like sometimes you want to do it if it's a class you want to have it stateless. Right, completely. So you keep passing the data in as opposed to having a few. Yeah. But it's a strat, so you just like create new ones and then it's more convenient. You don't have to pass it. But oh, I see it. what you mean. Anyway, yeah. Can you scroll down real quick? I just want to look at the rest of the uh, There's not much. So, so, the so <laughs> I think we probably glossed over some things that I wanted to talk about, but maybe. Yeah, um, I mean. That definitely gives a good overview. I had some, like, there are some things related to, like, uh, some of the stuff that we were talking about last night. Custom attributes, I assume, will come later. Custom attributes was a separate review, but even with respect to this review, we still have a few things that we might, but I think we should just talk offline and then if we decide to make changes, we'll. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think we will make a few tweaks to this and then we, we can quickly review the final. Uh, yeah. You know. Would be great. And and you, the, I think you still have to figure out the, the namespace. So, did you, yes, did yes, you yes. this last thing, I talked about it, but. The, the, the options is basically the, the WinRT thing, where, like, in the signature, there's actually a byte that says, like, this is a class or this is a, a value type, and then followed by, like, the token, which it's, like, redundant because this thing, but unfortunately, like, the signature has to, specifies it. So, like, in WinRT, you can, in a few cases, like, I forget, there's, like, type name is a struct, but then type is a class, and, like, each result goes to exception, so they go, Mm -hmm. And so you see, this is a it was a useful feature to have this. No, so you can have okay. classes that. Are <laughs> so actually, yeah, I did see interestingly enough somebody somebody prototype having classes on the stack, and they do, and they wrote the signatures by putting value and then a class. <laughs> uh, but, okay. but but that's not what that's not the way. Like today, it's it's invalid to say. Value and then, and then. but anyways, so the, the when you say none, we just pass you this. So if you saw it, like we glossed over the providers really quick, right? Like, I, like but anyways, I don't know if you want to stop. But like, basically, they pass in this code, right? But if you don't, if you don't, if you saw that optional parameter which was none, it's just going to pass you unresolved, unresolved, unresolved. Because basically, we just treat class or value type as the same thing, and then we don't have to worry about it. We just give you the token and like. That tells you if it's a class or a value type, right? The scenario that this covers is the case where, like, you're trying to write ILDASM, which an intern tried to do, and the feedback was, I, I can't, I don't know what to print here. Um, uh, Ninja Rosin doesn't need this information. Yeah. So and that's nobody really needs it other than ILDASM. <laughs> I suppose you need it. Well, well you, you might, Rosin might get into a situation where it gets an invalid thing and then. And then thinks it's valid, and then, but I mean it's corner case, like right. Like, but what what are you asking? Asking whether you should remove this? I think you should no, I just want to because you know if one person no. needed it for IL doesn't you know more will need it in the future and the APIs of the, the as you said the the principle of the design is to expose yes. yeah. the world yeah. as it is, yeah. not try to. That's right. Hide it. Good idea. Yep. So we have it. We should. Other, okay, I'll talk offline about a few other things. Yeah, I mean, I spent some time reading it offline. I mean, I, I, I have to say I like the APIs. I mean, I would need to be able to play a bit more with the flow because I, I use your early APIs to actually parse some signatures, so I have some context that other people probably don't have. But I haven't played with that shape yet, so I'm not. But I think it. I think the only the only feedback that that that, that I had the majority covered was the context, but. The context, so yeah. Because I mean, like I had the same problem. I wanted to pass in the containing method, for example, and you have to allocate essentially a provider every single time you, you decode something to just pass in the method, right? Mm -hmm. But I think I solved this originally by making them all structs, so I didn't care that much. You can't do that because you have the box to the, to 
to the interface. Then. Well, if so we make it outside sure. class, then we definitely can. Yeah, yeah I remember. So, yeah, that's um, problem. Yeah, that's so right. First, why don't you make the type, uh, you know, additional type parameter for the provider? Okay. And then, T yeah. T R T yeah. T context. I could try that. Yeah, yeah I think we, we should try that how it looks. So, I would really run to uh, avoid allocating the providers. I like the provider to be a single yeah. one. But though I have to say, if they are stateless, like you're gonna have five of them in the program. No, 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 no. They're stateful. Yeah, yeah. They're yeah. If they are stateful, then yes. But if they are, if you change them to be stateless, then you kind of don't care. Because you're not going to allocate right. That's exactly what I'm saying. Yeah. So basically, we have a TR. Now we don't care about interface, abstract class, or whatever, because you just make one. Uh, I think TR would work better. The first thing I tried was making T provider, which is a mess, because then you yeah. end up with like T provider is 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 uh, uh, signature from I signature provider of T type. And then like uh, type too inference falls down <laughs> and too much generics. But I think if we add a T, the problem is then do we have to have a version which doesn't take the, you know what sometimes you don't need the context mm -hmm. so I'm gonna have to have one takes object and pass null like I, which I can do. Uh, actually I can do that because I, don't, to, I have to, an idea we cannot instantiate all the points then yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, but I actually can fix that I think okay I'll do that. That let's take that feedback also be aware that like uh, CLR team JIT team yep. is very sensitive to us creating more and more generic APS like this oh. because it explodes uh, some it has oh, a shell of explosion. You haven't seen my like right <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. I'm doing the same thing uh, also in a lot of APIs that I create because it's so useful yes. in allocating in uh, avoiding allocations. Yes, it increases you know cogent size, but I have to the tell you should be smart enough to, to I'm you know maybe I'm wrong but like code Code size is not that important as data size, in my opinion. Yeah. I, I don't like. Know. So I just. Well, it depends on the case, but yes. All right. So I'll take that feedback. I will try to add the, the context. Uh, is that what we want to call it? Context? Or? Well, context, the thing is what we usually call it. I don't know why. Sure. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's going to have to pass it to all these methods. Just make sure we can make that a struct, was, right? A lot of, wow. Oh, well, let's try it. Let's try it and see how it looks. And but make sure it's a struct, right? Because if you have to allocate the context, that's also pretty fucked up, right? So if you make it generic, you need to pass it in as a generic. Well, all of them. I mean, in pra in practice, it's like the most common case is for this, the, the two generic parameters. But then it seems like a ways to drop it on the floor if someone passes your context, right? Like maybe it's useful for the other for the other things. Uh, let, let's yeah. Let's just okay. try. Sorry, I don't know. Yeah. All right. Cool. Then next time, just send an apex for the for the final thing, and then we just try to review it on over email. And that doesn't work. We have another meeting. Does that work? Thanks. All right.